Sandbox Brothers presents Bullet Train, the spoiler. So what's a bullet train? Well, a bullet train is a high-speed uh, railway uh, in Japan that has a capacity of reaching 320 kilometers per hour. And on the bullet train, there was also bullets flying. So the plot of the movie is a snatch and grab, where you have the main character, a ladybug, Brad Pitt, talking to his handler through his headset, uh, which is Sandra Bullock and Maria, pretty much guiding him through the as he's getting onto the train. And he's just filling in because uh, someone called in sick, Carver. So his goal is just to grab a briefcase, mission accomplished. So it may seem very easy, but sometimes it may not. What I liked about this movie is that there were so many different characters. And uh, one of my favorite two characters was uh, Lemon and Tangerine. They were uh, two assassins that were also on the train. And they were supposed to, uh, their mission was to bring back um, a briefcase full of money, $10 million, and White Death's son, alive. Now, it seems easy, but uh, along the way, they uh, lose that uh, briefcase and the son dies. There's too many things going on at once. Who, who the hell is White Death anyway? White Death. White Death is a Russian uh, mafia badass who uh, went to Japan and um, rose to the ranks in the Japanese crime family and uh, was told by his number two, told him, told him not to trust this foreigner, but he was so ruthless that he went away with him and eventually it ended up being a massacre where he took over everything and pulled out the Russian roulette style gun and destroyed and took over the Japanese cartel, I guess, uh, mafia. <clears throat> And he's the guy who got most of these assassins on this train. Uh, there was also a few other characters that uh, he didn't even intend on. And one of them was his uh, daughter, the prince. And uh, she was uh, out to assassinate uh, her father and get revenge for the neglect. Because the father would give more attention, I guess, to the son, apparently, than to her. So she was, uh, she was plotting to have him uh, assassinated or killed. And one of the ways she did this was to have someone else come on board, which was um, the, the father. They, they put him in as the father, who is uh, who's a character who was uh, working also for White Death somehow, like subcontracting. And what she did was she had his son uh, thrown off a building and then coerced them to come to the train so that he would kill White Death. The other character that was on there was White Death's son, which I mentioned before that uh, they were supposed to keep him alive, but uh, he ended up dying. So that's the prince. Uh, how did he die? How did he die? Well, you, you got to watch the movie to know how he died, but this is the spoiler. And uh, the, the theme of the train was like the, uh, I can't remember the character's name. It looks like a Hello Kitty, but not. Um, the Hornet, She's uh, she is one of the assassins who uses, uh, uh, poisons and, and uh, things to uh, injections to uh, kill their prey. So she initially was uh, at uh, a wedding where she poisoned everybody except for the groom. The groom, the groom you're talking about is the wolf. This is a, this is a very interesting character and uh, I really enjoyed the way they uh, introduced him. That uh, his story started off when he was a young boy and his mom dies at a young age. He packs his stuff up and leaves and uh, they show as he gets older, he's working his uh, way up the ranks of the Mexican cartel, becoming an assassin. Uh, shows everything up until the point where uh, everyone gets assassinated and it was wedding. And now he, he is making his way to the bullet train to assassinate the person who killed his entire family. Along the way, he meets Brad Pitt, Ladybug, and they have a scuffle. Now, uh, what I liked about the scuffle was that uh, this guy had a knife, and this knife would go through everything. It would go through uh, <laughs> a TV. It would go through Brad Pitt's phone when he threw it at him. It would go through a, a bar counter. But when uh, when he flinged it at a suitcase, it just flung back, and uh, and you got to see the rest of the movie to find out what happened. There's many, many scenes, but uh, one was uh, the interaction uh, with the Hornet, and uh, the ladybug, Brad Pitt's character, where he's right after that, he's wondering, why does this guy want to kill me? And uh, he looks uh, for the wolf uh, to see what he has. He came on the train for it, and he has a picture of the hornet, who's right there now in front of the guy, wanting to kill him. And there's a cool action scene back and forth, but she has the neurotoxin in the, <clears throat> and she also wants the briefcase in the, uh, syringe so as they're fighting there's a stop and she just has the needle she drops it it lands on his hand he quickly picks it up and stabs her with it and there's just a stare down and then after as she goes and gets the anti-venom he sticks it in his neck 
and then looks at her he's like you have another one right you have to prepare for these things and she's like Ugh. and then she dies with that blood coming out of her eyes that was one the other one was in the end where white death wants to kill all the assassins but he wants to kill carver who he's responsible for killing of white death's wife uh bradford care goes hey uh i'm not carver and he called in sick i want carver <laughs> don't call me bro you're right, man. There were so many different scenes, so many different characters. What I liked about it is that, like, every single character interacted with each other, and uh, they had some amazing scenes, like with Brad Pitt, Ladybug, and Lemon. I liked how when uh, he Brad Pitt went up to him and uh, he's like, "I got a gun under under this table, right?" And they're in the quiet uh, train, and they're just going back and forth on on what's happening. And uh, every time they would start making noise or making fight, there was a the lady at the in the back who would be like, "Shh." And they would stop and smile, and uh, and then they just continue fighting. And there was a, the other point in the same in the same scene where now they move over to seats, and there's the dead son there, the dead son of the of White Death. And <laughs> Lemon was about to punch Brad Pitt in the face, but at the same time, um, the son's dead body was like falling over. And when he was ready to punch Brad Pitt, he ends up punching the dead dude instead. Now I liked his, uh, his expression and how he did it. And the other one was where he was fighting. Uh, Tangerine now. Brad Pitt was fighting Tangerine. And again, they have this discussion. They're fighting in the in the midst of like this train where like no one else is noticing. And whenever the, the, the attendant would come in, the, um, the uh, train attendant to pick up, you know, uh, bottles of water or or snacks for their guests, they would stop fighting and, and you know, just smile at her. And, and uh, he ends up buying a bottle of water, Brad Pitt, and makes Tangerine pay for it. So, I mean, the, their interactions between characters, the dialogue was funny. Um, Brad Pitt was a Zen type character. And at the end of the movie, the other, the one more scene that I enjoyed was that there was these henchmen that they finally got the briefcase and they're wearing these masks. And one henchman starts talking to the other henchman and he's like, why do we have to open up the case? I mean, what if there's a bomb on the case, in the case? You think these masks are gonna protect us? No. Just to spoil it a bit, there was a bomb in the case, and you'll have to find out how it got there, but they did end up dying because of the explosion. So those are a few hilarious scenes that I enjoyed. Well, yeah, towards the end, after that explosion, uh, everybody who was left is on the train, and then there's this huge uh, race to stop the train now because there's out of control, and uh, there's an awesome fight scene. But the two things that went hand in hand uh, well, in the beginning was the, the song uh, Staying Alive in Japanese, and then after, during this, epic fight scene we need a hero but it was just in the japanese style and singing and then it switches over so it does go slow motion style after everyone's flying around and uh, getting knives and bullets getting thrown so uh pretty much uh intense scene but that's, i did enjoy that somehow a train crashes and uh, there's still like people alive so uh there's still the prince alive but uh the end where White Death was going to do the Russian roulette because he wanted Carver, but uh, it was uh, Ladybug and he was going to shoot him with the Russian roulette gun, but bullets are gone. So he ended up getting this other gun, which had a bomb in it and he blew off half of his head. Oh my God, did I spoil it? Oh my God, you did spoil it. Half his uh, head did get blown off. Uh, and that was uh, that was due to the, uh, the prince who set it all up, the daughter. Now she gets what she wants and becomes the new White Death, or does she? Um, the other character we forgot to mention was uh, the Elder, who is the father of the father. And uh, he was the number two for the mafia, the, the Japanese mafia back in the day, who warned them about uh, white death. And uh, his whole thing was about fate, right? That you're, you're fated, you cannot control fate. Whatever has to happen, has to happen. And uh, he was also in there at the end of the movie, um, battling with the white death up until the end. And the whole scene, the whole movie premise was pretty much luck and fate. Brad Pitt thought he was unlucky, but really he had luck. And um, fate is something that happens and that's something that White Death could not control. Now, the last and final scene is uh, Maria comes and picks up uh, Brad Pitt in her nice, I think it was an Audi, amazing, beautiful car. And she steps out, she consoles uh, Ladybug. And as they're going to the car, a street light just smashes the car. Now, at this point in time, Brad Pitt doesn't see it as unlucky. He says, it was, it was luck. You know, we could have been in that car. So his, uh, his thought process has changed at the time. Now, I really enjoyed this movie, and I'm going to give this movie two bullets to the head. This guy is so violent. The movie is violent enough. I would give this movie five out of six bullets due to the revolver gun. <laughs>